Hey guys, in this video we'll be discussing latent heat. We'll be looking at latent heat, specific latent heat, heat of fusion, as well as heat of vaporization. So stay tuned. If you haven't watched the video on heat capacity, the video link is at the corner. I suggest you watch that first. But if not, it's okay. Let's get into latent heat. Latent heat is involved when there is a change in phase of matter. So when we are looking at changes in phases, we are going from solid to liquid to gas or from gas to liquid to solid. Let's take an ice block for an example. So the ice block is in the solid form. When the ice block is changing phase, we need to supply heat energy, we need to heat it up. When we supply the heat energy, the energy is going to be used by the ice particles to overcome the forces of attraction between the solid particles, solid ice particles, so that they can move further apart and become liquid. And this is melting. The process is known as melting. And the same thing in liquids. When liquids are supplied with enough heat energy, this heat energy is used to overcome the forces of attraction between the liquid particles, between the water particles, and this water will then become gas, it will become steam. And this process is known as either boiling or evaporation. So the heat energy that is being supplied here during these changes of phases of matter is what we call the latent heat. Here latent heat is absorbed in order to break the bonds. So in melting as well as in boiling and evaporation, latent heat is absorbed. Whenever the particle needs to move further apart during the change of phase, latent heat will be absorbed. Then we can go in reverse as well. When steam becomes water, the particles come closer together and it loses energy. This process is known as condensation. And when water becomes ice again, this process is known as freezing. In these situations, energy is being released, energy is being lost. And so latent heat here is released. Latent heat can both be absorbed as well as released. It is very important to note that it is strictly the energy that is involved in the changing in the phase of matter. So it has nothing to do with the increase or decrease of the average kinetic energy of the substance. That is reflected in the temperature. So there should be no change in temperature. Latent heat is used for it to change phase and not to increase or decrease in temperature. This is the formula for latent heat. Q is equals to ML. Q is the latent heat. M is the mass of the substance that is changing phase. L is the specific latent heat. Mainly there's two types of latent heat. That is latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. Whether it's latent heat of fusion or latent heat of vaporization depends on what kind of change of phase of matter is taking place. If you are dealing with the change in phase of matter between solids and liquids, that means either solid to liquid or liquid to solid, then it is called latent heat of fusion. So when a solid absorbs latent heat in order to become liquid, it is said that the solid is absorbing latent heat of fusion. If the liquid is releasing heat energy in order to become the solid, then it will be said that the liquid is releasing latent heat of fusion. The proper definition will be heat energy that is absorbed during melting or released during freezing by a substance without any change in temperature. This is a key point again. There should be no change in temperature because the heat energy is strictly used to overcome the bonding between the particles in order for it to change phase. Whenever the change in phase of matter is between liquid and gas, meaning either liquid to gas or gas to liquid, the heat energy involved here in the change in phase of matter is called latent heat of vaporization. So a liquid would have to absorb latent heat of vaporization in order to become gas, and a gas would have to release latent heat of vaporization in order to condense and become liquids. Proper definition of latent heat of vaporization will be the heat energy absorbed during boiling or evaporation or released during condensation by a substance without any change in temperature. For definition, there's three things that you need to take note. Number one is either heat absorbed or released. 
Number two is the process involved. That depends on which change in phase of matter that we are talking about. If it is between solid and liquid, then it will be melting and freezing. That will be heat, latent heat of fusion. If it is between liquid and gas, then it will be either boiling, evaporation or condensation. So the process is linked to the change in phase of matter. And the third thing is without any change in temperature. This is very important. The concept of specific latent heat is very similar to specific heat capacity. So when we are dealing with latent heat, this is latent heat Q is ML. L is the specific latent heat. When we rearrange the equation and make specific latent heat the subject of the equation, this is what we get. Latent heat per unit mass. So this should give you a clue. Let's take a look at an example of an ice block here. So let's say this is an ice block. When we say the latent heat of the ice block, we are talking about the heat energy that is required to change the phase of matter of the whole ice block, the full ice block. But when we are talking about specific latent heat, we are talking about the heat energy that is required to change only 1 kg of the ice block. So this is the difference between latent heat and specific latent heat. When we say latent heat, we are talking about the whole object. When we say specific latent heat, we are talking about only one kilogram of the object. The unit for specific latent heat will be, according to the formula, heat energy here will be in joules and mass will be in kilogram. So the unit will be joules per kilogram. Specific latent heat of fusion will be defined as the heat energy absorbed during melting. Remember the processes here are melting or freezing because the change in phase for heat of fusion is between solid and liquid. So the heat energy absorbed during melting or released during freezing by 1 kg of a substance because we are talking specific latent heat. So it has to be by 1 kg of a substance without any change in temperature. During this time, there will be no change in temperature. There will be no increase or decrease in the average kinetic energy of the substance. Specific latent heat of vaporization would be defined as the heat energy absorbed during Boiling or evaporation, again, the phases here is between liquid and gas. The change in phase will be boiling or evaporation when heat energy is absorbed or condensation when heat energy is released. So the definition follows heat energy absorbed during boiling or evaporation or released during condensation by one kilogram of a substance. Again, this is specific latent heat. So it is only by one kilogram of the substance without any change in temperature. I'll be doing another video that compares specific heat capacity and specific latent heat. So watch out for the video. If you've learned something in this video, I hope you have. Please do hit the like button to support me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe. I will be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.